The Lord has become king, clothed with majesty. The Lord is robed, girded with might. The earth is established immovably. Your throne is established from of old. From all eternity, you are God. Hello and uh, welcome to our act of worship on uh, this uh, Sunday, the Sunday before Advent. Our first hymn is uh, 348 in Singing the Faith. It is, He is Lord. So we come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we praise your holy name. We rejoice in what we have been called to, and we remember that you are the good shepherd who looks after his flock. We praise you for you know your sheep. And the flock knows the voice of their shepherd. We praise you for all that is good, for the love that reaches out to us, for that saving power that reaches out to all people, to the powerful and the weak, to the healthy and the sick, to the free and the prisoner. You reach out to them all, And we praise you for that. Loving God, we confess that we sometimes lay aside what is good. We confess that we put down the good things. We pick up the things that we should not. We are called to live in love that too often we are filled with anger and envy and hate. Loving God, we confess our sins in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that in his name our sins are forgiven. Glory be to you forever. Amen. Our reading for today is uh, Matthew chapter 25 and reading verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne with all the nations gathered before him. He will separate people into two groups, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. 
Then the king will say to those on his right, You have my father's blessing. Come, take possession of the kingdom that has been ready for you since the world was made. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me into your home. When naked, you clothed me. When I was ill, you came to to my help. When in prison, you visited me. Then the righteous will reply, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you a drink, a stranger and took you home, or naked and clothed you? When did we see you ill or in prison and come to visit you? And the king will answer, Truly I tell you, anything you did for one of my brothers here, however insignificant, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, A curse on you. Go from my sight to the eternal fire, that is ready for the devil and his angels. For when I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat, when thirsty, nothing to drink. When I was a stranger, you did not welcome me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I was ill or in prison, you did not come to my help. And they, in their turn, will reply, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and did nothing for you? And he will answer, Truly I tell you, anything you failed to do for one of these, however insignificant, you failed to do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous will enter eternal life. Amen. Thanks be to God, for this is his word. In the Middle Ages, the great monastic houses were places of hospitality and indeed of pastoral care within their societies. We are sometimes used to the idea of all these uh, great houses, these monastic houses, as uh, being wealthy, but in actual fact, uh, it could be quite different for different houses. Uh, The ones in London, some of them, uh, actual fact, had great difficulty in keeping their money because they were places where people would visit and they would give hospitality to great numbers of people. They lived in that commandment uh, there of looking after and reaching out. The monastic houses uh, would not just give hospitality, but would act as the hospitals for the sick. They would look after the people that needed. And in that, they lived out what Jesus had commanded. This reading from Matthew, obviously, we can focus very much on the the separation of, of people and I've often seen that uh, being the, the message given. But it's worth just looking at the stories in slightly more detail. For a start, we find Jesus on the, the throne, and he is there with the nations before him. And in Matthew's gospel, we've seen that before. If we go back to the story of the temptations, in Matthew's gospel, the third temptation, 
which Satan offers Jesus is that the nations will be given to him. Satan will give him these nations and they will worship him and bow down and what have you there. Jesus, of course, rejects that from Satan. Satan is saying, if you take a shortcut, I will give you uh, what you uh, want. But in actual fact, in staying true to God's message, Jesus will find that what Satan promises will come to fulfillment. In truth, uh, we will see Jesus send his disciples out right at the end of the gospel to all the nations. We also see some of this uh, uh, lived out when Jesus sends his disciples out and that some will not give them water or look after them. And that rejection has gone in there. So again, we see that sense of uh, that giving there and the people who do not feed because they have rejected the disciples. A third passage that we, we might remember is uh, that if we go back to Matthew chapter 6, and there we, we find uh, there at the start of that uh, an area where the uh, sort of lay out the looking after. Be careful not to parade your religion before others. If you do, no reward awaits you with your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not announce it with a flourish of a trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets to win the praise of others. Truly I tell you, they have their reward already. But when you give alms, do not let the left hand know what the right is doing. Your good deed must be secret, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The truth is that the people who they have been receiving these alms and good gifts are people who cannot repay. The message there, these people who are hungry and thirsty and needing clothing and that, are people who cannot return and reward them for what they do. This is an act of giving not an act of being rewarded. In truth, the, the promise there is of ultimate reward. But those who can pay for these gifts will ha already have rewarded those. The sense of doing for others who need but cannot give back. And of course, we in our society are only too aware of the needs that are around us. And indeed, the church in so many ways reaches out into the society. I've often heard it argued by members that people come to the church when they want something and then we do not see them again. But is that not what we are called to do? There is a quotation, the church is only the church when it is there for others. We can perhaps seek what the church can give us, but in, other, in actual fact, we are called to reach out to those who cannot repay us, who will not give back. The message that Jesus gives as he leaves his disciples and passes on to his disciples is that they need to reach out to those who are in need. And if we need any greater example of that, we only need to look at Jesus himself. He does not stay within the 
the temple, the presence of, place of the presence of God. But he goes out. The people that Jesus mixed with are not the great and the worthy, but those in need. And he gives to them. The kingdom of God is one that is reaching out to all. So in our calling, let us be a people who reach out in love to those who cannot repay us. Let us be there so that they may know the love of God and know the fulfillment of Jesus Christ in their lives. Amen. So let us come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the great gifts that you give to us, for your love that comes to us, though we do not deserve it. We thank you for the freedoms that we have, the beauty of your creation around us. We thank you for the work of your church and for the saints who have gone before us. In this time, we pray for this world in which we live. We thank you for the work of the scientists who have been developing the vaccines that are starting to come on to, to stream. And again, we pray for those affected by this virus, those who struggle with being locked down, those who have been bereaved. We pray for those who are sick and those who look after them. Loving God, we pray for this world in which we live and we pray for the poor people for whom medicine uh, can be quite difficult to get to. We pray that you provide to their needs. We pray for justice and peace in this world. We pray for lands riven with conflict. We pray for people who live in failed states. We pray for the refugee and the migrant escaping from conflict, oppression, or poverty. Loving God, may you provide to their needs and keep them safe. We pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for the people of America following their election. And we pray for a, a good and peaceful transition of power. We pray for our own nation in this time of Brexit negotiation. We pray for wisdom and discernment. We pray again as power transfers in our own country between advisors and people who pull the levers of power. Again, we pray for wisdom. Loving God, we pray for all those whose businesses have been affected by this pandemic and again, we pray that you protect them and give them strength. Loving God, be with the sick that they may know your healing. May you give comfort to the bereaved and lift the burden from those who are, are weighed down with the worries and concerns. We pray that we should be strong in your name, that we may be the church in what we do and say, in the people that we reach out to, even though they cannot pay back. We pray that we should live in love and blessing and surround those in this community with that love and blessing. May we always point to your name and your glory. We dedicate ourselves to you, 
Hear us now as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our hymn is from Singing the Faith, 350, I Cannot Tell Why He Whom Angels Worship. with love is 
but this I know, the skies will thrill with rapture, and myriad, myriad human voices sing, and earth to heaven, and heaven to earth will answer, at last the Savior, Savior of the Be with us till we meet again in your name. May your love surround us. May your spirit keep us strong and safe. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.